Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Lab Talk. This is the series where we share expert tips and best practices to help you get the most out of our products in your lab. Um, today is Thursday, September 14th, and before I share our topic for today, let's go see what Megan's up to in the Immersive Lab. Hey, you're prepping PCR oh, samples? Awesome. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm just prepping some PCR samples. Um, I need to go clean my BSC in a minute, though. You know what? I'm just going to take a break from this, and I'll take you over there with me. Let's go. Hey, wait, hold on, Megan. What is that you're using to clean the BSC? I'm just using my 5% bleach solution like I always do. Well, wait, did you forget what la today's lab talk is about? Oh, that's right. Angela, you were gonna tell everyone if the use of bleach for decontamination in molecular biology labs is problematic. I think I'll wait to hear what you have to say before I continue. Uh, my name is Angela Carnwright. I am uh, on the marketing team here at Thermo Fisher Scientific. We had a great applications team prepare this deck for us today, so I want to call that out. Uh, I'm going to be delivering based on some, some, some scheduling challenges, so bear with me. And uh, I do have some friends that I can phone if we have questions that I can't quite answer today, or we can always follow up with you afterwards. So uh, bleach. Bleach, uh, typically diluted 3 to 6 percent sodium hypochlorite. Um, has been used as a common decontaminant in many HID or human identification DNA laboratories due to its characteristics as a disinfectant. However, problematic events can occur uh, when using bleach, especially when personnel are working under conditions that have a high volume of samples uh, that must be processed in a short amount of time. So possible errors with using bleach can lead to unwanted consequences of slowing or even shutting down some of these laboratory operations. Uh, bleach has at least four undesirable properties that can interfere with molecular diagnostic and or human identification lab operations. So let's dig into some of those today. So the first property or effect of bleach that is that it can contribute to DNA sample degradation. Uh, as you can see here in the graphs to the right, it has been shown that bleach contaminated samples show a partial DNA profile. So what do I mean by that? Uh, large loci, uh, greater than 200 base pairs, are dropped out of PCR amplification and genotyping due to DNA degradation. So you can see on the top there is the, is the blood DNA. Um, the middle, we show the hydrogen peroxide impact. And then on the bottom is the, the impact of bleach. So you can see that those peaks at the far end and the higher um, loci, uh, over 200 base pairs are drastically reduced that we can barely see them in this in particular figure. So this increases the risk. The degradation of, of DNA increases the risk of affecting the DNA profile. It can lead to sample loss due to the degrade, degradation. And then for human identification labs, it can actually lead to the inability to identify the individual that you're trying to identify. So um, it can degrade DNA and really throw off your operations. Next, uh, the effect of bleach on DNA is that it can cause, uh, it can has the potential to cause DNA sequence alterations. So when we look at this uh, figure here, we're talking about the increase in cytosine to thymine conversions in mitochondrial DNA. Uh, it can be, uh, a, so bleach, to step back a second, can be a cause of DNA sequence alterations, specifically the C to T conversion, which too can affect genotyping if the alterations are in the primer binding region of the DNA. Um, so it could present, present kind of in a partially a partial profile or even no profile at all. So there is a big impact here of, of introducing bleach. So you can see here, uh, the amount of the effect of cytosine to thymine conversion in the graph here with bleach versus um, not using bleach. So what, what, what's the risk here? Um, you're at risk of having the wrong diagnostic results or it possibly the wrong interpretation of those results if you have DNA modifications occurring. Next, uh, we think about the, the effect of bleach on equipment. So we often use uh, bleach on you know, disinfecting equipment. Um, and in, in a lot of cases, it can actually lead to corrosion 
uh, of the metal. So we, we work with a lot of stainless steel in the labs and, uh, and you have to read your uh, user manuals carefully to understand what the, the recommended cleaning agents are. And in a, in a lot of cases, some of the manufacturers may recommend not using bleach due to the corrosive nature of it. So uh, equipment such as biosafety cabinets are often um, uh, where we see a lot of bleach utilized. So there could be other options uh, that we could you know, maintain our equipment better. The effect of bleach on DNA also um, a lot of the um, experiments where we work with our DNA, so such as PCR, we often use primers and dyes, and um, the bleach fumes have been shown to impact and degrade the fluorescent dyes that we use in HID multiplex PCR kits, for example. So it can lead to a partial profile or no profile at all in the human identification labs. So if you're using bleach, it's really in this scenario, it's the fumes of the bleach that can impact the, uh, the fluorescent dyes. And you can see here on this uh, slide that we have an excerpt from uh, one of the manufacturers of the dye kits, and it does say to avoid using bleach uh, to prepare for your, for your um, PCR. So what is a better option? Um, what, what could you use instead? Well, it just turns out that Thermo Fisher Scientific uh, manufactures a product, uh, a series of products called RNAs Away and DNA Away. These are products that are recommended for decontaminating work surfaces, pipettes and instruments throughout the PCR protocol, including before and after sample collection, sample DNA extraction, and PCR master mix preparation. Further, DNA away surface decontaminant is recommended for all metal surfaces where, in addition to effective decon decontamination, a priority is to avoid corrosion. So remember we saw the corroded um, metal cabinet? This is a, a product that we don't have to worry about that whatsoever. So the DNA away and RNAs away surface decontaminates act as a better option than bleach. So let's look at a few reasons why. First, um, it is shown to... Um, that it's RNAs away surface decontaminant is effective at degrading contaminant P PCR products and genomic DNA. So if you look at the gel here, um, just to describe a little bit of what's happening in this uh, gel, uh, contaminant DNA samples were prepared by adding aliquots of mycoplasma PCR product or human gen genomic DNA to microcentrifuge tubes with or without RNAs away surface decontaminant. Samples analyzed by gel electrophoresis on the Invitrogen E-Gel PowerSnap electrophoresis device demonstrated no residual PCR products and human GNA, GDNA present for those tubes treated with the RNAs away. So you can see that on the left-hand side where it was treated with the RNAs away. While the bands of the samples in the untreated tubes, you can see there are bands visible there uh, for both the PCR product and the human GDNA. So we can see here that it's clearly, um, it's, it's working. It's, 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 it's removing those contaminants from, from our samples. So that's the number one reason to use it. Um, and then the second reason is around how exceptional it is at, decon at uh, decontaminating the, the DNA. So uh, here we show it compared to other uh, products on the market. Uh, and we can see through the CTs on the um, on the DNA way that we can um, we see that we definitely have less DNA contaminant compared to uh, the others uh, in the in the industry. Another option here, another another thing to call out at, about the DNA and RNAs away uh, is that they're used in many protocols and SLPs in laboratories and institutions such as the U.S. Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, as well as the Houston Forensic Sciences Center and the Environmental Toxicology Laboratory at the University of Saskatchewan. So there's it's very well established out in the field that this product is a great product in place of using bleach. Um, and they, they've been really proven in molecular biology laboratories. So in summary, um, why using DNA, uh, why, why should you use DNA away and RNAs away instead of bleach? 
Well, there's a few reasons. First, um, it doesn't corrode metal, so you don't have to worry about your equipment being impacted by your cleaning procedures. It doesn't leave, re uh, and it and leave residues that inhibit PCR, but DNA and RNA is a way reagents do not. So bleach can cause metal corrosion, leave residues, DNA, DNA away and RNA is away, do not. DNA away and RNA is away reagents do not require follow-up cleaning with water. So remove a step, all of a sudden productivity increases, and they do provide a safe, fast, and reliable proven alternative to the arduous and time-consuming procedure. So it's definitely going to save you a bit of time. DNA and RNA is away reagents are recommended as decontaminants by nationally recognized organizations and a lot of our customers out there can probably attest to this as well so if you're not using the dna's away dna and rna's away products and you are still using bleach we do implore you to consider uh, changing that and we've actually made it really easy for you today because in the resources section you can find how to uh, link to our product pages uh, where you can buy them online you can also take that information and go to your um, distribution channel partners where you buy uh, your products from Thermo Fisher all the time. Uh, and also we have some tech notes and smart notes there, white paper, to show you a little bit more detail on the science that we've done to, to prove that it is a great product. Um, and if you do want to find the resources on our website, you can also find them at thermofisher.com slash RNAs away. Oh, wait, hold on. We need to go back and see if Megan's learned from our presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Angela. I really appreciate you sharing that info with me. I think I'm going to start using RNAs away instead of bleach from now on. And we hope you guys all found that helpful to be, or to be very helpful as well. Um, and if you have anyone that you think might benefit from today's session, uh, this session will actually be available out on uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific's YouTube channel shortly, so you'll be able to share that with them. And you can also watch past episodes of Lab Talk uh, if you missed any of those prior. So uh, be sure to join us next Thursday, September 21st. Uh, we'll be discussing how ULT usage affects energy consumption and overall performance. So that should be a good chat as well. Uh, so we hope to see you then.